in part A of this question, we were told that the ball leaves the racket horizontally. And so we've drawn the ball over here. It's 2.37 meters above the ground. And if it's leaving horizontally, then the initial velocity would be pointing in this direction. Notice that a horizontal launch suggests that the angle at which the projectile is launched is equal to zero degrees. Now, we have drawn the final position of the ball over here in red, and we're trying to judge whether or not it's going to be located above the net. And so to do that, what we'll need to do is first figure out how long it takes the ball to launch from its initial position over here to the final position located over here in red. And we will go ahead and write down the information we know for the x direction. And it turns out that this will help us determine the time required to reach the final position. And we're going to keep in mind this equation right here as we write down the information. So for example, the initial x coordinate, which is symbolized by x naught. If we look carefully on the diagram, we've superimposed a y axis here and an x axis there. This point down here would represent the origin. And therefore, the ball is initially located at an x coordinate of 0 meters. By the time the ball reaches its final position, we know that the final x coordinate of the ball is 12 meters because that's how far away the net is from the launch position. So we will say that the final x coordinate is 12 meters. We know the initial velocity with which the ball was launched. It's 23.6 meters per second. And then again, the angle that the ball is launched at was zero degrees. So we're going to plug in all of the known information into this equation up here. So we have the x minus x naught equals the initial velocity times cosine theta multiplied by time. And that should be sufficient for us to calculate the time. So here we go. The final x coordinate is 12 meters. The initial was zero. We have the initial velocity of 23.6 meters per second times cosine of zero degrees, and then that'll be multiplied by time. The left side, of course, is 12 meters. The cosine of zero is just one, so actually the right side is 23.6 meters per second multiplied by time. And to solve this for time, we will divide both sides of the equation by 23.6 meters per second. So we'll pick up our calculators here, and 12 divided by 23.6 is 0 0.508. And that will be in seconds. So that's the time it takes to reach that final position. We will next determine whether it clears the net by figuring out the final y-coordinate. On the diagram, the final y-coordinate would be located right here where it strikes the y-axis. So we're looking for that final y-coordinate. Notice the initial y-coordinate is the 2.37 meters. That's the height at which the ball was launched. So we're going to start writing down the information we know for the y direction. So again, the initial y coordinate is 2.37 meters. The final y coordinate is what we are looking for, so we don't know that. We know the time that it takes to reach that final position. We just determined that to be 0.508 seconds. The initial velocity, again, is known as is the initial launch angle. And then we know that the ball is under the influence of gravity. So the magnitude of the gravitational acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. With all of this information listed, we're going to be able to use this second equation from projectile motion to find the final y coordinate. So it's this one right here. We'll copy it down below. And then we'll plug in the known information. We've listed it above. So y minus the 2.37 meters equals the 23.6 meters per second times the sine of 0 degrees times the time minus 1 half times g times the time squared. Notice, by the way, the sine of 0 is 0. So this entire term actually zeroes out. So now we have y minus 2.37 meters equals. The other side, you're going to type in negative 1 half times 9.8.
times the time squared, you get about negative 1.267 meters. And then you'll add this 2.37 over to the other side. And when you do that, you're going to get a final y coordinate of 1.10 meters. So if we go back to the diagram, that will help us determine if the ball clears the net. We now know that this is 1.10 meters. And indeed, that is located above the net. The net was only 0.9 meters above the ground level. So when the question A says, does the ball clear it? The answer is yes. And then B, what is the distance between the ball and the top of the net? We're basically going to subtract these two values to get the answer to part B. So it'll be the 1.10, maybe we can call this a delta Y. It'll be 1.10 meters minus the net's height of 0.9 meters. And when we do that, we can see that the answer to part B here is 0 0.20 meters. Now on to parts C and D. And in this case, the ball is served as before, but it now leaves the racket at five degrees below the horizontal. So that's going to change the initial angle that the ball is launched at. So if we draw a horizontal here, and then, well, that's a little too much of an angle. If we go maybe like that, now we know that this angle is five degrees. However, because that angle is being measured in a clockwise fashion, because it's measured below the horizontal, you want to make sure that your angle is negative five degrees. Any angle that's measured in a clockwise fashion is indeed negative. The height of launch is still the same. I suppose the initial velocity is still the same or the initial speed, I should say. And now we are asked again if it clears the net or not. So we've now changed the final position of the ball. We don't actually know where it is right now, but we're going to anticipate that perhaps it does not clear the net, probably because in the previous part of the question it did clear the net. So they're probably trying to change it up on us. So we've drawn the ball down here. We don't know this final Y position right there. The net is still 0.9 meters high, but this final Y coordinate is unknown, and we're going to end up figuring that out. It's very similar to what we've already done. So in the X direction, we've listed all the information, but this time we've changed the launch angle to negative five degrees. So we're going to come down here and use the same equation that we used earlier for the X direction, this equation right here. We've already plugged in and filled in the negative five degrees right there. And when you solve this in the same manner that we described earlier, you, you will find that the time is 0.510 seconds. And so that's a slightly different time than the one we found earlier. And now we go to the y direction and we fill in the known information again. Again, we've changed the launch angle to negative five degrees, and now we're gonna change the time to 0 0.510 seconds. We'll end up using the same equation as before. So now we have y minus the 2.37, equals the 23.6 meters per second times the sine of negative five degrees times this new time of 0.510 seconds minus the one half times 9.8 times the time squared. We've omitted the units this time just for clarity. Let's punch in the entire right hand side of this equation. You can do that in one fell swoop as long as you use your degree mode carefully on your calculator, as you should have done earlier. So we do that and we get negative 2.32 on the right hand side. And then finally, we're going to add the 2.37 to both sides here. And when you do that, you will get a final y coordinate of 0 0.047 meters. So it's pretty obvious the ball isn't going to clear the net because that final y coordinate of 0 0.047 meters is well below the 0.9 meters. And so it won't clear the net is the answer to part C. And then part D, what is the distance between the center of the ball and the top of the net? So we need this distance right here, which is definitely not drawn to scale. So in this case, the delta y is going to equal the 0.9 meters minus that final y coordinate that we obtained. And when we work that out, we're going to get about 0.85 meters. 
Your homework system might want you to enter that as negative 0.85 meters because it has fallen below the level of the net. So if that's the case, you might need to include a negative sign for your final answer to part D.